स्टडी कहीं है बट आई हैव इंक्लूडेड सम एक्स्ट्रा पॉइंट फ्रॉम माय साइड ओके विच इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम फॉर योर नीट एंड एम्स एग्जामिनेशन ओके एंड सम एक्स्ट्रा कंसेप्ट आई विल गिव यू यू विल श्योरली इन्जॉय सो मस्ट वॉच दिस वीडियो टिल लास्ट ओके यू विल सटनली इन्जॉय द कार्डिय साइकिल I will start cardiac cycle from the late diastole, okay? Then we will go for atrial systole. Then we will go. Then we will go for ventricular systole. Then early diastole, okay? Now systole means contraction and diastole means relaxation, as you all are knowing. So starting with uh, late diastole, and here diastole means ventricular diastole. Late ventricular diastole. In this. ventricle is just relaxing okay ventricle is just relaxed so once ventricle relax the blood will come from atrium to ventricle so mitral and tricuspid valve which is connecting atria and ventricle must be open so that blood can come from atrium to ventricle okay so i written here mitral and tricuspid valves between atria and ventricle are open but ventricle is just relaxing at the time of diastole so there will be no blood outflow from the ventricle to the aorta so aortic and pulmonary means left ventricle is connected to aorta and right ventricle is connected to pulmonary artery so in late diastole of the ventricle it means when ventricle is relaxed there will be no blood flow from from the ventricle to the aorta and pulmonary artery so aortic valve and pulmonary valve are closed at the time of late diastole okay so my mitral and tricuspid valves between atria and ventricle are open and aortic and pulmonary valves are just closed clear now 70% of ventricular filling occurs in this late diastole and uh, blood flows into heart through out diastole and so main important points are there here 70% of ventricular filling occurs in this late diastole period and mitral and tricuspid valve between atria and ventricle are open so that blood can come from atrium to ventricle and pulmonary valves are closed so that blood will not blood will not outflow from ventricle to atria uh, aorta and pulmonary artery and one more thing in atrium blood is coming from vein supervena cava and inferior vena cava and that blood is actually going into ventricle from atrium to ventricle so it is also known as joint diastole because at that time atria is in also in diastole period and uh, ventricle is also in diastolic period means ventricle is also relaxed atrium is also relaxed the blood which is coming from inferior vena cava superior vena cava is directly going through atrium to ventricle no need of ventricular contraction the speed at which blood is coming from inferior vena cava and superior vena cava to the atrium at that particular speed the blood is going to your uh, ventricle okay so no need of contraction at this time but when okay so i have written here blood flows into heart throughout the diastole filling atria and ventricle both now after 70% filling of the ventricle now atria will start systole okay and the blood which is remain in atria which has not been flown to ventricle will pumped out from the atrium to the ventricle when atrial starts contracting that is known as atrial systole so contraction of atria propels some additional amount of blood into ventricle those amount of blood which was remain in atria okay because this is the type of a structure actually this is the type of a structure okay suppose this is ventricle this is atria so it is the atrioventricular valve that is mitral valve or tricuspid valve so some blood is deposited here at this corner okay maximum blood which is coming from inferior vena cava is directly going into this but the blood which is deposited here deposited here will go when this atria will undergo contraction means when atria will do systole clear so contraction of the atria propels some additional blood into the ventricle getting move to this side contraction of atrial muscles and one more important point thing mind it it is important for aims that is the contraction of the atrial muscle will narrows the orifices of the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava because this is your atrium okay suppose this is atrium and this is the superior vena cava this is the inferior vena cava suppose so when this will contract when this will contract then it will also lead to the 
here is opening so it will also lead to the contraction of this opening means narrowing of the opening of the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava so contraction of the atrial muscle will narrow the orifice of superior vena cava and inferior vena cava and once the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava orifice get narrowed then the blood flow will decrease but inertia of the momentum inertia of the motion of the blood will keep this blood flowing into the atria because you know inertia okay in physics you have read so inertia of the blood will keep blood flowing into the aorta although the orifice of the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava get narrowed because of the contraction of the atrial muscle atrial muscle will con atrial muscle will contract which will lead to the contraction of the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava orifices getting so i written here contraction of atrial muscle narrows orifices of superior vena cava inferior cava but inertia of blood flowing towards the heart keep the blood flowing in atria although the atria is contracted and the orifices of the superior vena cava and inferior cava vena cava get narrowed but the inertia of blood moving towards the heart keep blood flowing into the atria clear now moving to the next slide but one more thing important more uh, one more important point in this uh, uh, atrial systole is that despite these inhibitory effects influences there is some regurgitation of blood influence regurgitation means back flow means some blood will flow back flow from atria to superior vena cava and inferior vena cava because atria is just contracting see their diagram atria is contracting so it will uh, propel some blood towards ventricle and also some blood towards upper side upper side means uh, through the orifices of the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava although the orifices of the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava are narrowed second point the momentum of the blood keeps the blood flowing in direction of atria but still of these two factors i have mentioned here inhibitory influences inhibitory influences means despite these two inflammatory inhibitory influences which two that is the uh, momentum of the blood keeps the blood flowing towards the atria and the narrowing of the orifices these two are the inhibitory influence for the regurgitation of blood regurgitation means backflow of the blood from atrium to superior vena cava and inferior vena cava but there is some regurgitation of blood occurs in veins despite of these two inhibitory influences clear so now now moving to the ventricular systole ventricular systole before starting discussing ventricular systole first you will discuss about some pressure in aorta and pulmonary artery for pressure in aorta is 80 mmg normally and pulmonary artery 10 mmg diastolic pressure okay so once ventricle is filled during atrial systole fully filled then ventricle start contracting and once ventricle start contracting its volume is decreasing and its pressure is increasing volume is decreasing ventricle start contracting so its pressure will increase okay once the pressure inside the right and left ventricle increases and increases and increases and once it increases in left ventricle because left ventricle is connected with aorta and right ventricle is connected with your pulmonary artery okay it's large sorry okay so understand your left ventricle is connected with your aorta and your right ventricle is connected with your pulmonary artery so we all know that something flows from high pressure to low pressure okay anything flows from high pressure to low pressure so when the left at left ventricle will attend pressure more than 80 mmg then the blood starts flowing from the left ventricle to aorta and once the right ventricle will acquire pressure more than 10 mmg then blood flow starts from the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery okay and ventricle start contracting after filling and contract 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 and this will increase pressure increase pressure increase pressure and once it will reach to 10 mmg and 8 mmg then pulmonary valve and the aortic valve opens and the blood flows from left ventricle to aorta and right ventricle to the pulmonary artery and the time period of the contraction which it, it has taken to reach the 80 mmg and 10 mmg it is known as isovolumetric contraction because there is no any volume pumped out from ventricle there is no any volume pumped out from ventricle 
but ventricle is contracting just ventricle is contracting for increasing its pressure more than 80 mg and 10 mg respectively in left and right ventricle to cross the pressure in aorta and pulmonary artery getting this is the most important because all of you are confused in isovolumetric contraction what is isovolumetric contraction isovolumetric because volume of blood inside the ventricle is not changing okay many of you are confused that volume of the ventricle will not change no volume of ventricle is changing because ventricle is contracting 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 so volume of whole ventricle is reducing but blood which is present in that ventricle is not changing the volume of the blood present in ventricle is not changing because it will change only when it pumps ventricle pumps the blood out from the ventricle to the aorta and pulmonary artery and it will occur only when pressure reaches 80 mmhg and 10 mmhg clear so this period of volumetric contraction is known as isovolumetric contraction okay volume of blood is not changing during this contraction and during this contraction the pressure rises to 80 mmhg and 10 mmhg and once the pressure rises it the ventricle uh, will fl uh, outflow the, uh, from ventricle blood will go to the artery uh, aorta and pulmonary artery okay and because of the opening of the pulmonary valve and aortic valve so this is most important point now discussing some more important point when the aortic and pulmonary valve opens the phase of ventricular ejection start means ventricle start to eject blood into the aorta and pulmonary artery so ventricular pressure increases increases and it will increase up to 120 because ventricle is contracting 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 once pressure reaches to 80 mmg and 10 mmg it will start pumping blood into aorta but still it is contracting so pressure will still increase and reaches to maximally 120 and 25 mmg 120 in left at, uh, ventricle and 25 mmg in your right ventricle okay and uh, now late in systole late in the system late in systole of the ventricle presses in aorta pressure in aorta actually precede that in left ventricle okay now aorta get accumulated with blood so pressure in aorta also rises and pressure in aorta rises more than 120 okay once it rises more than 120 then the blood ejection from the ventricle to the aorta will get a stop okay because pressure is increased in aorta and pressure is less in ventricle because pressure in aorta is increased more than 120 due to, due to accumulation of blood in aorta but still after increasing pressure in aorta still some blood will flow, flow from left ventricle to aorta because of the momentum of the blood inertia of the blood okay mind it this is the conceptual part which is maybe action aims pressure is greater in aorta but still blood is flowing from ventricle to aorta means from low pressure to high pressure why this flow is occurring because of the momentum of the blood because of the inertia of the blood clear so uh, i have written here keep momentum of blood keep blood flowing into it okay this is all about ventricle system now coming to one more important point end diastolic volume is 130 ml means when ventricle is fully filled with blood there is no ejection of blood from ventricle that uh, before a start of the isovolumetric contraction the volume present in the ventricle is 130 ml end systolic volume is when aortic and pulmonary valve get closed and the blood flow flow from ventricle to aorta and pulmonary artery get a stop at that time if you measure the volume of blood present in ventricle that it will be 50 ml so what amount of blood get ejected that is known as stroke volume and that is known that is 130 minus 50 it is probably 70 to 90 ml range is 70 to 90 ml is your net ejection volume or stroke volume sometimes ems also asks about ejection fraction what is ejection fraction ejection fraction is just ejection ejected amount by total amount total amount means in diastolic volume in diastolic volume means at the end of diastole the amount of blood present in ventricle at the end of diastole the amount of present amount of blood present in ventricle is known as in diastolic volume so ejection fraction is calculated by ejection amount upon end diastolic volume because from end diastolic volume stroke volume is the amount which is uh, subtracted from end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume you are getting now coming to the early diastole of the ventricle systole is over then ventricle will go diastole in diastolic condition that is known as early diastole because we have started from late diastole once the ventricular muscle is fully contracted the already okay I, am, I have said that ventricle is start contracting it will cross first 80 mmg then it will cross your 120 once it reaches 120 
वेंटिकल स्टिल गेट कॉन्ट्रेक्टेड बट दिस टाइम मोर कॉन्ट्रेक्शन विल डिक्रीज यर इट्स प्रेशर बिकॉज ऑफ द एक्टिंग मायोसिन ओवरलैपिंग ओके सो सिंपली यार वंस द वेंटिकल रिचेज वन ट्वेंटी मोर देन वन ट्वेंटी एम एच जी प्रेशर इट्स प्रेशर विल स्टार्ट टू फॉल डाउन ओके एंड द ऑलरेडी फॉलिंग प्रेशर ड्रॉप्स मोर रैपिडली एंड दिस इज नोन एज प्रोटोडायस्टोल मीन्स फॉलिंग प्रेशर इन वेंट्रिकल इज नोन एज प्रोटोडायस्टोल ओके एंड इट एंड्स वेन द मोमेंटम ऑफ इजेक्टेड ब्लड ओवरकम दोटिक एंड प्रोमरी वाल्स क्लोज एफ सेट डेट प्रेशर इन एवटा हैज राइज अप बट स्टिल ब्लड इज फ्लोइंग फ्रॉम वेंट्रिकल टू एवटा ड्यू टू मोमेंटम वंस दिस मोमेंटम इज ओवर ओके इन सी आई इज ओवरकम देन देर विल बी नो ब्लड फ्लो फ्रॉम द एवटा टू द प्रमरी आर्टरी टू द सॉरी वेंट्रिकल टू द एवटा एंड प्रमरी आर्टरी ओके ब्लड फ्लो विल बी कम्प्लीटली स्टॉप एंड अल्टीमेटली एवटिक एंड पलमरी वाल विल गेट क्लोज ओके आफ्टर दिस वेंट्रिकुलर गो अंडर रिलैक्सेशन ओके ना वेंट्रिकल गो रिलैक्सेशन इट मीन्स रिलैक्सेशन मीन्स इट विल डिक्रीज इज प्रेशर डिक्रीज इज प्रेशर डिक्रीज इज प्रेशर एंड एंड वंस इट्स प्रेशर इज लेस देन एट्रियल प्रेशर एट्रियल प्रेशर देन एट्रियो वेंट्रिकुलर वाल विल ओपन डेट इज माइक बाइक स्पीड एंड ट्राइक स्पीड वाल विल ओपन एंड अगेन ब्लड फ्लो स्टार्ट फ्रॉम एट्रिया टू वेंट्रिकल ओके बिकॉज ऑल दीज आर प्रेशर ग्रेडियंट बेस्ड वंस द प्रेशर इन वेंट्रिकल ड्यू टू रिलैक्सेशन गेट डिक्रीज इन कंपेरिजन विथ एट्रिया देन द एट्रियो वेंट्रिकल वाल विल ओपन एंड ब्लड फ्लो स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द हाई प्रेशर एरिया डेट इज एट्रियल एरिया टू द वेंट्रिकल ऑल आर प्रेशर ग्रेडियन रिलेटेड ओके सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट योर कार्डियक साइकिल ओके आई होप यू इंजॉय और आपको कुछ समझ में नहीं आया हो इसमें तो आप जरूर कमेंट करें ठीक है मैं फिर से क्लियर करूँगा कि थोड़ा सा इसमें मैं कंसेप्ट लिया हूँ थोड़ा सा आइए ठीक है कोई भी प्रॉब्लम हो तो आप जरूर कमेंट कर सकते हैं और अगर अच्छा लगा हो तो लाइक बटन दबाइए सब्सक्राइब कीजिए और अपने दोस्तों के साथ शेयर कीजिए थैंक